Hello everyone and welcome to this week's Kerbal Space Program video which, in response to popular demand, is going to be a recreation of the Falcon 9 rocket which for those, don't, those who don't know is a booster produced by SpaceX the unique selling point being that once the payload uh, sets off on its way the initial lifting stage boosts back and lands, on, lands again vertically on a set of landing legs. Now, unfortunately it's not actually possible to do a true recreation of the Falcon 9 because what would happen is when we detach the payload and we start controlling the booster the payload would still be on a suborbital trajectory so once we'd finished landing the booster the payload would have either crashed down onto Kerbin and been destroyed or re-entered Kerbin's atmosphere at which point we wouldn't be able to control it anymore. Now with that being said I'm only having these problems because I play stock you can get around this issue with mods. The best one to my knowledge and the last time I checked which was a while ago is called um, FMRS. What that does is it generates save points after separating a probe or a satellite or something so then you can launch your mission into space and then jump back in time to when you separate it and you have full control over the booster that you're trying to land and you don't lose either half if that makes sense. What I've done in videos such as my Strata launch and SR-71 probe video which revolved around a similar concept of having a recovered first stage. Uh, to make those videos I just created a quick save uh, did the mission where I landed the uh, initial launcher and then reloaded the quick save and then filmed the bit where we do the payload part and in each of those times you will lose either the payload or the um, first stage depending on which bit you're filming so that only really works from a video making standpoint I think and I wanted this one to actually have a practical use so the way I'm doing this because I wanted this to keep it all stock was basically to have the first uh, the first stage essentially be an SSTO so it gets the entire rocket into a stable orbit and then has a enough fuel to not only deal with itself but also land itself vertically and we're pretty much all the way there we just need to do a small 94 meters per second puff uh, to get ourselves circularized and you can see now the fairings have detached uh, the orbital stage we'll talk more about that later on here we go just getting ready to deorbit the main booster so we've got some monopropellant boosters at the top as well as a bunch of SAS wheels probe cores and some RTGs in case you're wondering why the electric charge seems to be spontaneously refilling itself even though there's clearly no solar panels on this thing that's how it's doing it there's some RTGs stuffed in that small uh, fairing scaffold anyway we're going to start out by uh, pointing ourselves radial out just because this creates a lot more drag than pointing ourselves along the retrograde vector we want to try and bleed off as much speed as possible because I wanted to land somewhere in the vicinity of the Kerbal Space Centre I didn't really want to land in the Kerbal Space Centre complex because that also, that also requires a lot more effort <laughs> but also because these things aren't always the easiest things to land and sometimes they can fall over or just hit the ground too hard and explode and we want to try and keep this away we want to minimise any potential casualties so all you YouTuber guys who are making these amazing videos landing on the helipad, you are very irresponsible and shame on you. <laughs> um, that was a joke, of course, just in case some people didn't get that. <laughs> but yes, the main driving force for landing it here was because I felt this might be better for my own sanity. And touchdown! Beautiful! So there's the first half of this video completed and during this brief intermission I'd like to just advertise that I now have a Discord server. Um, so if you want to join that and we can all chat and interact, there is a link in the description. Uh, there's a few YouTube guys in there, Hazardish and Mark Thrym and Bradley Wistons and a bunch of others are all in there. So, you know, should be a bunch of fun. So that's in the description. Anyway, back to talking about the video. I'll talk more about the actual design of the orbital stage when we can actually see it, but we're going to just take it to a space station, the asteroid base to be precise, because although we have 3,640 meters per second, I didn't want to detract, uh, like the Falcon 9 is designed to deliver uh, payloads to low Earth orbit, I was about to say low Kerbin orbit, low Earth orbit, and you know, I wanted to keep this video sort of nice and contained and focused more on the actual uh, method of delivery into orbit rather than doing crazy things whilst we're in orbit. Anyway, here is the orbital stage here and you may notice some air brakes and landing legs because unlike the Falcon 9, we can actually recover the second and obviously we can recover the crew module as well. So other than the fairings, this is a fully reusable rocket and Elon Musk, come at me, bro. I mean, I know you are saying about recovering the entirety of uh, future SpaceX rockets and even surfing back the fairings and therefore making those recoverable as well. But for now, I am much better at designing rockets than you are. And that is a, you know, undisputable fact. OK, we cannot argue with this. I'm clearly far more qualified to run SpaceX than you. So, you know, if you are willing to step down and put me in charge, I will gladly 
uh, take control. And now all of that is out of the way and said, let's talk more about what we're actually doing. So I guess there isn't actually a lot to talk about really, we're just gradually getting our encounter with the space station by tweaking with the maneuver node, and we have a separation of just 100 meters, so we are very close. Um, but then this happened as we neared the space station. Anyway, I eventually managed to get to the asteroid station without it being ripped apart by the Kraken. The way I did this was just by using the square brackets to quickly switch back and forth between the um, asteroid station and my spacecraft, and it seemed to make things stop spazzing out. I don't really know why it was glitching out. Maybe it was the drills inside the asteroid, who knows. All I care about is the fact that we managed to get here and we, we're all right. <laughs> okay, so we can start thrusting towards the docking ports now. Generally, just take your time. Uh, this footage is sped up. In reality, it was much slower, so don't try and approach it at this exact speed because this footage is sped up. You can see I didn't ever accelerate beyond one, uh, one meter per second, so we're taking a nice steady approach as we get closer. And get as close as you can, as accurate as possible, and the magnets generally just do all the rest of the work once you're close enough. And there we are, Jebediah, Bob and Bill can do a quick inspection of the engineering works and just things uh, on the space station. We're not going to stay here too long though and we're certainly not going to quick save just in case the Kraken decides that actually he does want to ruin my day. So <laughs> we're going to stay here as uh, just as brief a time as possible. But for those curious, this asteroid station and the capturing of the asteroid itself were in previous episodes. In fact, last week's video was the asteroid station construction and the week before that was capturing the asteroid. And both those videos can be found on my channel and I'll put a link to the construction of the base uh, at the end of this video. So. With that all said, let's get away from this awful place. Now we actually have about 3,000 meters per second of fuel left, so it seems like a bit of a shame to just go back to Kerbin now. So we could use a little bit of that to go and visit my other space station. And this is the space station that I would imagine a lot of you actually found my channel from or, you know, know me by, <laughs> if that makes sense, because this was my most viewed video by quite a massive margin, uh, constructing of a space station. It's that one. So let's go and visit it. Uh, there has been a little bit of expansion, which was done over a live stream, but it was only one module and the actual space niche space station itself i always have trouble saying that word every single video i do and um, the actual space station itself is largely unchanged from when it was uh, constructed in my video anyway very small burn to get ourselves uh, to an intersection with it in fact i like to uh, remove the maneuver node about now and just do the last of the burn using the actual uh, conics there so we can get a nice close approach we got straight into a hundred meter uh, separation so nice encounter we can just spin the camera around see if we can see it once we get close enough and get ready to dock to it again. So our closest approach is fairly close. We've got a zero kilometer separation now. So I generally just get my close approaches by retrograde, then burn towards the target, then burn retrograde, then towards the target, bring in ourselves closer and closer. You'll get you'll get the hang of it once you've done a few dockings, it will become a lot more trivial. I know at first it can seem like quite an intimidating thing to attempt, but here we are. You can see the um, big scanning satellite there on the side of the station found out that doesn't actually work unless you're in a polar orbit and so the, that was how I learned that that is a thing from mistakenly docking it to this space station. Uh, so the big radiator panels are the section that was added during the live stream as well as obviously the um, scans, uh, scanning satellite thing. So we can get a Kerbal out to open up that docking port. I mean we could have done it using the space station on board controls or by using the crew on board the space station but... Um, I don't know why I did it this way. It seemed cool at the time and I completely forgot to undock that docking port on the actual spacecraft itself so we can just go ahead and do that. 
and then just faff around using the monopropellant boosters to get ourselves nice and aligned. You do this using H and N for forwards and backwards, and then J, K, L, and I as if you were doing W, A, S, D um, to do the fine controls, you know, the up, down, left, right, and all that shebang. So it is a little bit hard to get the alignment right without some kind of mod. I know raster prop monitor and docking port alignment indicator are both favourites of the community, but as you can see, we don't need any of that today. And this is the space station, so not much more to say about that really. Again, we don't need to do a great deal here, we're just doing a quick inspection. We can't refuel because there are no fuel tanks on board this space station, but not that we need to because we have enough fuel on here. The only uh, mistake I made with the... Um, spacecraft was the fact that I didn't actually have the foresight to put an engine on the orbital module itself so we're left with the problem that if we were to deorbit the engine stage the module the command module will be left in orbit stranded with no means of getting back to Kerbin surface I mean we could get a Kerbal on EVA to push it uh, to get the deorbiting done which would work but seems a bit silly and on the uh, alternative method of doing this we could deorbit get the whole thing on a suborbital trajectory use the parachute to land the crew module and then use the engine to land the separation the separated engine stage which would be a thing you'd do in real life or with a mod but because we're playing stock we can't do that because one will hit the ground uh, at a time when we can't switch to the other one if that makes sense so we're just going to go ahead and land the whole thing as one stage. So this was done, oh look, I had to do a few quick saves to get this right. We tried. To, I tried to land it fairly close to the Kerbal Space Center, although I didn't get quite as close as I did for the booster. But, you know, we're easily within walking distance, it wasn't a problem. So we're just going to deploy the air brakes. You do have to be careful because air brakes are notoriously uh, bad when it comes to re-entering. They are always the first component to explode. So just be careful with brakes. You can see the map. I haven't got the cursor visible. We can see the text appearing over the brake thing, the brake icon. I was hovering over the B key, making sure that as soon as I see the temperature gauges get worryingly high, I could immediately um, fold the brakes back in. But in the end, it didn't actually. I uh, didn't have any problems here. So we're not going to use parachutes because I wanted to showcase that the engine stage can definitely land on engine power alone. And since it's actually landing with a much heavier payload than it normally would have done, it is. It is even more powerful than it really needed to be. So, don't really know what that's proving there, but here we go, just landing very, very gentle with the throttle. This is um, being sped up, this footage, by the way, so it is looking like I'm being far more liberal with the speed than I was uh, at normal speed. But here we go, getting ready for the final touchdown. So, there we go, one meter per second. You don't really want to be going much faster than that, especially on a slant, which is what I was doing here. But other than that, we have now landed, we've landed the booster, we've landed the second stage, and of course we've landed the crew module. So I'd say this video is pretty successful, but just for, I guess, example's sake, we'll just separate the command module so we can truly stay, say that every stage landed separately, because technically the command module hasn't actually landed on the ground yet. So here we go. We could deploy the parachutes and shuffle ourselves to the edge and let the chutes deploy and let ourselves touch the ground safely. And you couldn't ask for a safer landing than that, to be honest. So I am pretty happy with that. So, in summary, I hope you enjoyed this video. Craftfile is, of course, in the description. Remember, do check out Discord, my Discord server. I'm very excited to get this up off the ground. And I guess just the standard thing about Twitter and Patreon are all in the description as well. If you want to ask me questions or anything, obviously, you know, you've got Discord, but also Twitter. I'm um, just as likely to check. So anyway, uh, video is on screen now. Top left is the construction of the asteroid base you saw in this video. Top right is the capturing of the magic asteroid. Bottom right is a very cool SSTO I made. And bottom left has been specially selected for you by YouTube's algorithm. So I hope you enjoy.